So on my prayer walk today, I've come to the cemetery in Blaby. Uh, very much like lots of other cemeteries, I imagine. And I've come to think about Jesus being in the tomb. Sometimes it feels as though the Saturday between Good Friday and Easter Day has nothing happening in it. But it was a reality for Jesus that he was put into a tomb and that he was dead. And that gives me a lot of encouragement when I'm dealing with death as a Methodist minister or as a, a human being. And these little children's graves are a reminder to us that death um, affects all kinds of people and all of us in the end. In this part of the cemetery there are older graves and so not as many people have been able to remember those folk and yet I believe they're all held in God's arms and God's loving care. I don't know what you believe about death and about life beyond death but I have increasingly over the years come to a stronger and stronger sense that when we die we're not finished with that those of us um, that those bits of ourselves who are us, I suppose what we would have traditionally called the soul, uh, can't just finish and is of much more eternal significance than what happens to us in our earthly lives. And so I do have a sense that God is with us beyond death. I have no sense of what it's like, um, but I do have a glorious conviction that we'll be with God again and that all things will be understood and that we will be understood and that we will understand and know and be full of love for the whole creation. I like the way that cross includes the whole of creation as well as a kind of a halo. Of course I could be wrong and one of the things about faith is that we know we could be wrong and if it turns out that death is the end I feel like that's actually also okay because God is with us in this life and yet I believe there's so many things we can't understand we can't really get our heads around how it's possible uh, for there to be there to be a life beyond this one. I remember being asked in a school class, how is it possible that there could be um, so many people in heaven? <laughs> but then there are so many things we just can't even begin to imagine. But um, I don't even try to understand that. I just have a strong sense that we matter and that we matter eternally and ultimately. So I'm going to walk you down to this bottom part of the grave because um, it's at this end where uh, we've got, I've discovered some war graves. Just before the lockdown, I saw um, 1917, the film, and it reminded me that most wars are really brutal and vicious. And this is a war against COVID-19, which is a real struggle for those involved actively in it. And I was reminded of the, the four crosses here, which are literally standing side by side. You can just make out um, the years people died don't know, it's 1914, 1915, but one of them is a woman, so I don't know if they are um, wartime graves or a family. They're all in a little rectangle. But there is something very powerful for me about the standing side by side of these graves. Um, and 
then as I move across here I'm moving into the more modern part of the cemetery it's a peaceful cemetery actually you can hear the birds here there's not really any traffic Here's a, a grave to, and if you can see it, buried elsewhere in this cemetery, see Jesson, Royal Air Force, died June 1918. So sometimes we don't know where people are buried. It's interesting in the gospel stories that um, Jesus was buried in a tomb and they knew which one it was because they wanted there to be no uncertainty about the fact that he had died. So Lord, we thank you that in the midst of death you're present with us. We thank you that Jesus didn't shy away from the death that came to him, that he gave up his life for us and that he took part in every aspect of human life and death. And today we remember that he is with us in every aspect of our lives and our deaths today. In Jesus' name, Amen.